In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. So today, God willing, we're going to speak about laziness. Okay, And as Orthodox Christians who are asked to do so many different things uh, in our spiritual life, laziness can be a big problem. Because we know what it is that we should be doing, but then we have to get ourselves to actually do that. right? And that can be a challenge, because in the midst of our life, in the busyness of our life, and all the things we have to do, and if we have kids and uh, work and uh, you know family and so many things, that we have a hard time to manage our time. And then with the any, any time that we have that you can say is discretionary, meaning any, any time that we have left over after we do all the things that we're required by somebody else to do, then what do we do with that time? Right. So like, for instance, we have to go to work because we have to live and we have to have income. And so there's like external pressure on us to do that, external pressure on, on us to go to work. There's external pressure on us to do a lot of things. Right. But when it comes to the spiritual life, there's not that much external pressure. I mean, we're taught what we should do. You know, we hear sermons about what we should do. But what actually is pushing me to do it? It has to be myself, like the only one that can really push me to do according to what I know is right, is myself. No one is managing me, you know, as adults. Nobody is coming over us and saying, okay, you know, you have to manage your time a certain way. So laziness can be a problem because during the time that we have, like you could call it downtime from all the stuff that we have to do, uh, we want to rest, we want to sleep, we, you know, find it difficult to be motivated maybe to do things that we should be doing. And so laziness is, is a big obstacle to us because we just want to come home and rest. Because whenever we don't have anything we're forced to do, we want to rest. And in the, in, the, in the Christian life, we are not called to rest. You know, it's funny, actually, when you say that Sunday is the day of rest. Okay? It's the day of rest. This is the day of rest. Right? For me, waking up really early in the morning and spending all day in the church and all this, but this is the day of rest. So what is the kind of rest are we talking about? It's not the kind of rest where we just stay home and sleep in. That's not the kind of rest. It's resting in the Lord. It's like resting in God. So laziness is preventing us actually from resting. Laziness is preventing us from resting in the Lord. We are resting our body, but our spirit is not resting. Our spirit is anxious. Our spirit feels incomplete. Our spirit remains hungry because it is not resting in the Lord, and only our body is resting. And it's one thing about, you know, if anyone who maybe, maybe we remember this for summer vacations when we were in high school is in summer vacation you have so much free time and so what you end up doing you sleep a lot right and you're very lazy and then you find yourself though you don't have any energy like even after you wake up even though you've spent so many hours sleeping and resting you find yourself still not rested like you still don't feel satisfied you still feel like there's something missing and there's something lacking and we want to we still feel tired it's almost like you wake up and you feel like you want to go back to sleep again okay so Laziness is a problem, right? Because we feel almost like this is the, the, the solution to our, to our hectic day is we want to go home and be lazy. But actually, it's, it's not. So we're going to talk about that. In the parable of the talents, Christ speaks about this parable that the master gave talents to the servants. You should have said something else. In the parable of the talents, uh, the, the, the master gives his servants different amounts of talents. And the talents like represent like his property or his money. Okay? And to each one, he expects them to manage that property well, to manage his money well. Okay? And to one he gave five talents, to one he gave two talents, and to one he gave one talent. And the one who had the five talents, he worked hard and he was able to produce another five talents. And the one who had two talents, he worked hard and produced another two talents. But the one who only had one talent, he didn't do any work and he didn't produce anything. And so when the master came back, what did he say about this man, the man who only had the one talent? He said, his Lord an, uh, answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that, that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So essentially he's calling him wicked and lazy. Wicked and lazy. So the idea is, the reason why he didn't do anything with that talent was because of laziness, right? He didn't want to. He didn't feel motivated. He says, you know, I'd rather spend this time just vegging on the couch. I'd rather spend this time doing something that's just pleasing to me 
that's a diversion, that's entertaining, that's recreation. I'd rather just do nothing rather than get up and actually start working because in order to work, it requires energy. I have to expend energy. I have to give of myself. I would rather be doing something else and we have to force ourselves to do something that we know is good even though it doesn't feel good in the moment, right? Maybe we experience this on Sunday morning, okay? When we have a, we've had a long week of work and then on Sunday we know we should get, go to church and yet we struggle to wake up in the morning and we really don't want to wake up, okay? But then when we do eventually wake up and we do go to church and we do find like we spent the whole day in church, we feel happy, we feel joyful, like we, we actually pushed ourselves to do what was right and we feel contented. We feel, again, like we've rested in the Lord and we feel like we've used our time, not like this lazy servant, but as a, a profitable servant, a person who took his time and he produced something with it, not as just a person who, you know, let his time fly by, let his time go um, without, without doing anything. Right? So laziness is, is, is very dangerous to us. And usually laziness starts out gradually. We don't all go maybe full lazy all at once, but it starts out by making sh small compromises. Um, I'm going to sacrifice something that I know I should do because I want to rest instead. And then it, it becomes a habit. And then maybe we sacrifice more and more until we find ourselves we're unable to do anything. We, the, 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 all we want to do when we're not being compelled by an exterior force like our boss to work is I just want to go home and I want to do nothing, right? But God is telling us, no, don't go home and do nothing. Go home and work some more, but work in a different way. Not working for the world, not working for what perishes, but working for that which does not perish, okay? And, and your motivation has to be your own mind telling you this is what is right. When I stand and pray and when I'm exhausted, right, this is me telling myself, no, this prayer is important. Even though I feel tired, even though I don't want to do it, but I will do it. And again, once we do that thing, there is so much joy in it. The more tired we are actually, after we do what is right, we feel even more joy. Because we feel like we fought against the flesh. We fought against what our hearts were lying to us, telling us what we should do, and we conquered. We were victorious, right? We fought against laziness, and we were victorious against laziness. So what is laziness, okay? Here are some dictionary definitions of laziness. Averse or disinclined to work, activity, or exertion, indolent, causing idleness or indolence, a hot, lazy afternoon, slow moving, sluggish, a lazy stream. Okay? So it could be we don't want to work, we want to remain idle, or we're slow moving, meaning we're not quick to take action. You know, when we know that there is a need or we know there's something we should do, we're like, mm, I'm going to get to it eventually. I'm going to eventually do it. Uh, not right now. Give me 10 more minutes. Give me 30 more minutes. Give me two more hours until finally the day is gone. And when the day is gone, there's no more opportunity, right? So one thing about laziness is that we always delay the action. And this is actually more common than just saying we're not going to do it. Because maybe it's difficult for us to say, you know what? I'm never going to pray. And we just make that decision. I'm never going to pray at all, ever, right? It's much easier to say, I'm going to pray in 30 minutes. Let me finish what I'm doing. I'm going to pray in 30 minutes. Or let me just take a short nap and then I'll pray after the nap. Or whatever it is, I'm having fun doing this. I'm going out with my friends or doing something. And then after I come back, that's when I will pray. And, and when we come back, obviously there'll be something else. That'll be like, oh, I just have to clean my house. Oh, I have to take care of my kids. Oh, I have to do whatever. And then I will pray. right? And we keep pushing it, pushing it, pushing it off. Because we never say we're never going to do it, but we say, I'll do it later, okay? And that later never comes because we keep pushing it to the next day and the next day and the next day. We all tell ourselves, you know what? I want to, like, start anew. I want to have a new system. I want to pray every day. I want to pray with my family. I want to, you know, read the Bible more. I want to do this, but I'll do it later. I'll do it tomorrow. I'm not going to do it immediately, right? So this slowness, right, this, this, this like, uh, lazy way of approaching something is to say it's not that it's bad and it's not that I'm never going to do it but I'm going to do it sluggishly I'm going to do it in a slow moving way okay so today God willing we're going to speak about the characteristics of a lazy person and then next week we'll talk about what are the consequences of being lazy okay the first uh, characteristic of a lazy person is they hate their work they hate the work that, they, that they're wanting to do. In Proverbs 21, 25, it says, The desire of the lazy man kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. Right? 
His hands refuse to labor. And when I say that the lazy person hates his work, it's in comparison to the alternative, which is not to do anything or to do something fun, something that they want to do. Maybe even in our jobs we find that there are certain activities that we like to do and there are certain things we absolutely hate to do, right? And given the freedom, we're always going to do those things that we like and we will never do those things that we hate even if those things are important and necessary. We just don't want to do them. The only way to do them is to force ourselves to say, you know what, this is something I have to do. This is an important activity, so I must do it. So this lazy person, he always tries to run away from work. The other characteristic is that he always wants to do the minimum, right? Always wants to do the minimum. You know, like when I was, you know, growing up and my mom would tell me, you know, clean the floor. I'd be like, okay. And I clean the floor as fast as possible, you know, spending the least amount of time cleaning the floor. So because I didn't want to clean the floor. And then she would come back later and say, this isn't clean. Like this, you didn't do a good job of cleaning the floor, right? Because I really didn't want to clean. My heart was not in the cleaning. My heart was in what I wanted to do that I couldn't be doing while I was doing the cleaning, right? So, so this is also laziness, right? It's, laziness is not just about doing nothing, but it's about doing something half-heartedly, doing something without full energy, doing something without caring about it, right? This is, uh, this is laziness. So for instance, when somebody says, well, you know what? I am praying and I am reading the Bible and I'm doing these things, but my question is, are you doing the minimum in that? Are you putting your heart into it? Are you really wanting to benefit from it? Are you investing into it? Or are you doing it just because you're supposed to do it? And you're just checking a box and saying, you know what, I pray today. I did it. I was extremely fast. I didn't understand anything. I couldn't wait until it was done because I wanted to do something more fun afterward. But I did it. Okay. The attitude that we have toward the activities that we do makes a huge difference. I have to care about what it is that I'm doing. I have to invest time, not just to throw time at it, not just to say, oh, okay, I spent 20 minutes doing this. No, I have to invest, meaning I have to say, this is important, and so I will invest time to do it. Also, the lazy person, what procrastinates to the last minute? You know, I have something important that I have to do that I really don't want to do. Okay, I'm going to wait, wait, I'll do it next, next minute, next hour, next day, whatever, until you finally get right up until the deadline of the thing that you have to do, and you're like, okay, I have to do as fast as possible. And so obviously the quality is going to suffer. You're not going to spend as much time as you should spend on it, right? And all of this is laziness. You know, if I was motivated to do it early on, I could have done a better job. I would have had more time. I could have actually reviewed it, you know, and said, well, maybe my first draft of it wasn't the best. And now I'm going to do better, right? If I wait to pray right when I'm about to go to sleep, for instance, because I kept procrastinating the whole evening because I kept putting other things at a higher priority than that, then what I'm gonna I'm not gonna do a good job of prayer. I'm not I'm gonna be too sleepy, I'm gonna be too tired, I'm not gonna have any energy. And so yes, I can say that I prayed, but my prayer was lacking. My prayer was, you know, lacking a lot. So it was poor quality. Another aspect of a lazy person in terms of hating work is they always rely on other people to do the work instead of them. So like for instance, if you're like in a team setting and one person really doesn't want to be in the team, doesn't want to really work, so they're just going to say, you know what, everyone else is doing their role and that they're doing a good job, so I'm, I can kid to take a step back. I don't have to be involved as much. I don't have to do as much because other people are doing it, okay? This happens in our families, for instance, growing up. As parents, we teach our kids, you have to go to church, okay? Well, that's good. Maybe the, care, the parents are motivated to go to church, the parents understand that it's important to go to church. The parents are willing to wake up early on Sunday morning to go to church. And the kids have to go because they're with them. Okay? But at some point, we have to instill in our children that same value that even if I'm not with you, you have to do it. So maybe the parents are relying or the children are relying on the fact that the parents are working hard and doing this and they're benefiting as a result. These lazy team members, even at work or school or whatever, they get the same grade as everybody else. And so from the outside, they look like they're successful. They look like they're achieving. They look like they're doing. But if you take away all those other people and you just leave this lazy person by themselves, they can't manage it. They can't do it because they were always relying on other people to do it for them. And they just kind of attach themselves, which is a quality of the lazy, right? They're good at attaching themselves to people that are hardworking because those people do everything and they don't have to do anything. 
Second Thessalonians 3, it says, For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. Eat your own bread. Don't eat the bread of your neighbor. Don't, you know, live a life of laziness and then when you're in trouble, go to your neighbor and say, Hey, I forgot to work or I didn't work or whatever. Now give me what I need. Because I didn't get it on my own. I couldn't get it on my own. Okay. So that's the first, uh, that's the first example. Or the first characteristic of a lazy person. The next characteristic of a lazy person is that they love sleep. Okay, they love sleep. In Proverbs 26, 14, it says, As the door turns on its hinges, so does the lazy man on his bed. And you can imagine like a person just like turning side to side, and then they get tired of one side, and they turn to the other side, and then they get tired of that side, and they turn again. Right? Someone who enjoys sleep a lot, and unfortunately we all like to sleep, right? Hmm. It's not that sleep is bad, okay? But we have to be careful in how often we let ourselves to sleep. Because again, if you sleep, you can sleep your entire life away. If you live to be 70 and you sleep eight hours a day, which is like a normal amount of sleep, like they say we're supposed to get, you will have slept for 23 years of the 70 years, okay? A third of your life you will have slept. So if in addition to those eight hours a day, you take naps and you know you sleep, and I, so you know, maybe we're up to like 30 years or 40 years of our life that we are sleeping, okay? So we have to, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah? <laughs> Each extra hour we sleep per day is three years of our life, right? Three years of our life for sleeping one extra hour a day if you live to be 70, right? So we, we kind of don't think about it, right? But we ask, how can I be more productive? How can I produce more? How can I have more time in my day to do all the things that I'm struggling to do? Well, if I'm finding time to sleep because I don't, I'm not motivated to do other things, okay, and I don't have good time management, I will find myself sleeping a lot and sacrificing a lot of important activities, right, as a result. Like we said before, even though you might think that a person who rests a lot is more energetic, it's the opposite. The person who rests so much actually gets more tired, right? So you find yourself less motivated. Have you ever been like very motivated to do something and then you take a nap? And then after you get up, you're like not even motivated at all to do it anymore. You're like, you know, I'm just, I just want to stay home. I'm just tired. I'm just you're not motivated. After you take a nap, you're not, you're not motivated, okay? A lot of times we avoid certain services because it cuts, cuts into our rest time, right? You know, there are some things like in the church or, or otherwise, it doesn't have to be in the church, that's difficult work, difficult things we have to do. And then maybe we're asked to do that and we think about it. You're like, you know what? This, this is going to cut into my sleep. It's going to cut into my naps. It's going to cut into my free time. It's going to cut into my recreation time. So I, I don't want to do it, right? I don't want anything to mess with this free time that I have, right? Um, and that's why we focus in the church on ascetic practices, okay? When we do things like fasting, we do things like prostrations, we do this. What we're doing is we're disciplining the body. So I'm like, you, you want rest, the flesh, the body wants rest. I'm not going to give you the rest. Not only am I not going to give you the rest, I'm going to make it harder on you. I'm going to do prostrations. I'm going to make you tired, right? If you, like I said before, if you've ever prayed when you're tired, compare that to what it's like to pray right after you wake up from bed. It's different. When you pray when you're exhausted, it's different than when you pray when you're fully uh, rested. A lazy person, the third characteristic of a lazy person is they make excuses. Okay, Proverbs 26, it says, The lazy man says there is a lion in the road. A fierce lion is in the streets. Th there was no lion at all. That's the reason that he doesn't want to get up and to do something. He doesn't want to get out of his house. He doesn't want to travel. He doesn't want to do anything because he's saying to himself, there's a lion. There's a lion on the road when there was no lion. Okay? So sometimes we make excuses to avoid work. And these excuses are not as much um, to make excuses for others, but they're make excuses to myself so that I don't feel guilty to avoid work. How many times, like when we're asked to do something, you say, you know what, I'm just so busy with my studying. I'm so busy with my work. I'm so busy with my kids. I'm so busy with this and this. And no one is denying that you're busy. 
the busyness is not like we're not saying you're not busy the question is can i still afford it can i still do it am i really so busy that i can't do it which in some cases yes some people are or am i just using that as an excuse to get out of the work you know and this is a question that each individual can answer for themselves i'm not telling you the answer some people are so busy that there's no way they could do anything else right but some people they really don't want to work or maybe they are lazy maybe there's another reason why they don't work and they're just using this in a, as an excuse and they're not again using it as an excuse just to tell to others they're, they're using it because they want to feel good about themselves i'm not a lazy person so the reason why i can't do this is because of this and i'm convinced that this is a legitimate reason why it prevents me and disqualifies me from work but what what's difficult then in that in that case is when you begin to compare with others all of us maybe know people who like are super servants that somehow find the time to do absolutely everything even though their time is very limited right and we look at those people and we're like how are they doing it and if you really look you'll find that they have no time for themselves right the difference between someone who is so involved in so many things and successful in a lot of services and a person who's barely doing even one thing is usually not their schedule as much as it is how much time they want to spend for themselves right and i'm not trying to say that rest is wrong actually rest is necessary we have to rest okay but how much rest is enough how much rest do i offer myself how much rest do i give myself is is it that i really am as busy as i imagine or is it that i dedicated so much time of my day for myself and for rest that it prevents me from doing uh, so many other things. What are some excuses that we make to others to um, justify our laziness? We could say, I forgot. You know, everything, I forgot. You know, the reason I forgot is because I didn't really care about it. Like, for instance, sometimes people are not really, like, uh, into keeping appointments. You know, I told you I was going to meet you at this time. I told you I was going to come to serve in some way and at this time, and I just didn't show up. Why didn't you show up? Oh, I forgot. Well, why did you forget? You forgot because you didn't care. You forgot because you never made a point to remember. You forgot because you never put it in your calendar because you cared so little about it and you felt, well, other people are going to take care of it. You know, I don't need to be there. Usually, when we forget something, we wouldn't have forgotten if it was important. If it was some really important appointment for myself that I really cared about, I wouldn't forget. Right? I would have done something to remind myself. I would have put it in my calendar. I would have done something, right? But sometimes, again, we just say, oh, you know what? There's so many people that are helping out with this service. There's so many people that are doing this. So I really don't need to be there, right? Someone else will do it. Or, again, we say, well, I didn't have time. I didn't have time. Or I'm too busy. Or it wasn't necessary. Or whatever excuses we might make, right, to say, to justify why I am not able to participate in something, to do something uh, important. The fourth characteristic of being a, a, a lazy person is that we waste a lot of time and energy. Proverbs 18.9, it says, He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who was a great destroyer. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who was a great destroyer. What is it that we are destroying? H how is it that we are a brother to him who is a great destroyer? What do you think? right so what are we destroying we're destroying our spirits by doing what yes yes so what specifically is even before we get to that what is what are we destroying our time we're destroying our time right like like when christ says was redeem the time because the days are evil this was redeem the time because the days are evil. What does it mean to redeem? Yes. It, it, the, the, the literal meaning of redeem is to exchange. Okay? Like you redeem a coupon, right? You give the coupon and you get something in res, in, in, as a result from giving the coupon. You're exchanging one thing for another. Okay? Like when we say that Christ is our redeemer, meaning he gave himself for us. He traded himself in for us. Okay? So what does it mean to redeem the time? 
But literally, what does it mean to redeem the time? Yes, exchange our time for? For spirituality, for holiness, for righteousness, for a relationship with Christ. Like we're redeeming, we're taking our time, we're using our time to get something from it. So when we waste our time, we are essentially destroying our, our time. And, and because we destroy our time, we destroy ourselves. Because it is through this time that God gives us that we can grow, right? It is the time, the only time that God gives us to grow is the time that is in our life here. So the more I waste this time, the, the more I destroy the opportunities that God has given me to grow in Him, okay? So laziness destroys the single most important resource we have. The only resource we have that we can never get more of, that we can never increase in, that we can never accumulate, okay, is time. It's not like money. Even though we, we think about money as being valuable and that we can gain money, but money doesn't grant us salvation. Time, we, can we redeem the time for salvation, okay? And our time on earth is limited. And like I said, we can do nothing to gain more of it. If we waste some of it now, we can't get more later. If I waste money now, I say, oh, I'll earn some more later. I can compensate for the money that I've wasted. I can get some more money, right? Or I have so much money that I can afford to waste some money. I can afford to spend some money on some stuff that's not very important because I have so much of it. But time, we don't have so much of it. And time, you don't know how much you have of it, right? It's an unknown quantity. I have no idea how much time I have. And God is telling me, redeem the time, right? And when we were reading last week about in the gospel reading about the end of the world, saying the time is near, right? When is we, the time is near, like we don't have so much time. In First um, Peter 1.17, he says, And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear. How is it that he wants us to conduct ourselves the short time that we have here on the in the earth with fear, right? So we have to ask ourselves, what do we spend the most of our time doing? What do we spend the most of our time doing? Among the youth, the activity that they prefer to do above all other activities is what we call hanging out. Right? Hanging out is is an activity of very like very important activity okay what is hanging out hanging out means i'm not necessarily doing anything productive like i i'm uh, you cannot do something productive while hanging out okay it's not possible these are incompatible to do anything productive while hanging out and again i'm not trying to say that hanging out is wrong okay but we tend to have the approach again that as long as i'm not being compelled by someone to do something useful, then every other moment of my life has to be hanging out, has to be useless, has to be just fun, has to be just doing what feels good. Because I've earned it, right? Like work hard, play hard. I've earned it. I've worked hard, and now I can play hard. And I can play and do whatever I want, okay? And again, I'm not trying to say that it's wrong to have recreation, okay? But that can't be the only thing that I do with the remaining time I have. Cannot be. Because if that's the case, I'm only going to do what I'm compelled and forced to do against my will. So where is my love for God? Love is a voluntary choice. Love is saying, I choose to do an action for you that I am not required to do because I love you, right? So when we love God, we have to choose by our own will, not because we have been compelled or forced by someone to do something, to offer something to Him because we love Him, right? So this is very important. Because when laziness ties into this, because if I suffer from laziness, then it prevents me from demonstrating love to God. All I'm doing is spending all of my time on myself. It prevents me from loving others too. Because the time that I could be using to serve my family, to serve my friends, to serve my church, to serve anyone in the world, I'm instead using it on myself. Okay. The fifth characteristic, this is the last one we'll talk about today. The fifth characteristic of someone who is lazy is that he believes he is wise, but he is a fool. He believes he is wise. Proverbs 26, 16, it says, The lazy man is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. Okay, Why is he so wise in his own eyes? Because he thinks he's clever. He thinks he has gotten out of work. 
and that work is evil. Work is the last thing I want to do, and so I want to escape from it. I want to escape from work, and because and when I find a way to escape from work, then I am clever. Right? There are many people who their goal in life is I want to retire very early in my life. And the reason I want to retire very early is because I don't want to work, because I want to be free. And what am I going to do with this freedom? Hanging out. I'm going to hang out for 50 years. Okay? I'm going to be able to travel the world. And I'm going to be able to do this and this and this. All these fun, amazing things that we all wish we could do. And I imagine that I'm going to do this for decades because I don't have to work and I have nothing compelling me. Right? We want to be free of anything compelling us to do anything against our will. Unfortunately, our will has been corrupted. Like if our will was pure, then yeah, okay, I don't have to work. I'm going to spend my days doing useful things, doing productive things, doing heavenly things. Great. If that were the case, fine, don't work. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Okay? So the more free time we have, the harder it is for us to use it wisely. And the lazy person believes in his mind that the least work I do the least work I am required to do, the better off that I am. I am very smart to get out of work. I am, a, you know, I have so much wealth because I'm so clever and so good and I do work so much that now I can be completely free. This is the goal of a lazy person. The goal of a lazy person is not to work at all, right? Because that is my target. The only reason I do some work now is because I'm being forced to do it. But my goal is zero work. 100% my will, everything that I want is given to me I can attain everything. I don't have to do anything that I don't want to do. Okay? Which to many of us sounds compelling. Sounds nice. Right? Who, like we don't want to have a boss. We don't want to have to wake up early. We don't want to struggle in work and have the stress of work and the problems of work. And I, but there's a flip side to this. Okay? The, the flip side is, is without structure and without work, our life completely deteriorates. Not just secular work, not, not just work in the world. But if that is my mentality about work in the world, then it is also my mentality about work at home. It is also my mentality about the spiritual work that I am expected to do. I don't want to push myself to feel any kind of discomfort. I don't want to push myself to do anything against the way that I feel, right? And that, of surely, the spiritual work that we do is certainly in that category. We don't feel like we want to pray. We don't feel like we want to fast. We don't feel like we want to do any kind of ascetic work. We don't feel like waking up early to go to church. We don't feel those things a lot of the time, and yet we must do them. So a person whose mindset is, I want to be completely free of any kind of work, also believes that they want to be free from spiritual work. Unfortunately, they, you can't separate the two because the root cause is not just, okay, my specific job, I want to be free from it? Okay, maybe. Maybe I don't like my job. Maybe my job is too difficult and I should switch to another job. But being completely free of work in general, the idea of work, essentially means that I don't want to do anything productive, okay, including uh, spiritual work. So this person, he is wise in his own eyes. He believes that this is the goal and he thinks he can attain this goal. And if he does attain the goal, he thinks he is successful, okay? Again, Proverbs 6, it says, Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways, and be wise. Why is King Solomon telling us, go to the ant? What is it, what is it that we learn from the ant? They're, they're constantly working. Constantly. Have you ever seen an ant asleep? The ants don't sleep. They're always working. And what they can produce is amazing. Like you said, more than any other animal, they can lift more than... Like, like compared to their body weight more than any other animal, right? And they work together and they, they move things. I mean, I've seen ants move things. I couldn't believe it. So the idea is, is that God wants us to learn from the ant how to be productive, how to do work. And if we are doing this, then we can grow in, in ways that we haven't imagined as possible, right? Because a lot of times when we talk about spiritual growth and we talk about prayer and we talk about all these things, but then in, our, in my own life, I don't feel it. Say, you know what, I tried to pray, I tried to read, I tried to do this, and I don't see any effort, well, again, or I don't see any result. How have you done it? It's not just the fact that you are doing it. How are you doing it? And what are you doing with the rest of your time? Are you trying to be productive with your time? Are you trying to do spiritual activity with your time? Or is this the absolute last thing on your mind that you're going to do only when you're forced to do it against your will, when I'm in the middle of a crisis situation, and maybe in this crisis situation I will actually pray? 
Prayer is supposed to be something that I do on a regular basis regardless if there's a crisis, right? So if I only wait to pray in an emergency situation, then I'm not going to have a lot of comfort because I have no relationship with this father that I'm praying to and asking him for support and comfort. I'm going to him like I'm going to a stranger. I'm going to someone to just ask him, oh, can you please help me? Well, where were you the other years that, you know, you could have come to me? You're only coming to me because you want me, you want something from me, right? So above everything in the spiritual life, you know, it requires work. It's not just something that comes for free. And if we suffer from laziness, and we all suffer from it in some degree or another, but if we suffer from laziness, then we have to really think about this and say, do I only do what feels good to me? Do I only do something because I want to reach a state where I have no obligations and no work that I have to do? In, in which case, it's very hard for me to do any spiritual activity. But if we put in our minds, like, I need to do something good, something productive, whether it be in my secular life or in my spiritual life, like the ants that are always working, then I can grow spiritually and not feel always paralyzed and not feel like I can't, I can't function or I'm not growing um, closer to God. Any questions? Does laziness get more as you become older? It can. It can. But I think it's, it's moderated by the decisions that we make. So for instance, when someone is young and very energetic, they can choose to develop certain habits. Okay? And as we get older, it's, it's tempting to break these habits. Right? Because we're maybe more tired or we're more busy or, you know, so many things. So these habits, like, it's easy to break. Once we break the habits, then everything starts to fall apart. Because being productive is all about developing a habit of productivity. How am I going to manage my day? I, I'm in the habit of doing certain things. If I don't compromise these habits, then regardless of my age, whether young or old, I'm going to be productive. But if as I get older and the burdens that are on me and the this, this stress on me and the time you know, limitations on me cause me to break any kind of habits that I have in my life, then I think, yes, once we break those habits, then it's very easy to fall into more laziness. So it's very important that we set some kind of schedule that we intentionally, purposely follow so that we don't, uh, you know, so they don't fall into this. You know, if you can imagine someone, who, let's say, who is in middle school or someone who is in high school, they have so much free time, right? But maybe they don't have the maturity to organize it in the right way. Then as that person gets a little older, they begin to have more maturity thinking, you know what, I need to manage my time better, but now they have a lot less time to manage because there's so many other obligations and requirements. Then you get married and you have even less time. Then you have the first kid, the second kid, the third kid, and you have even less time. And your work is more and more and more stressful. So as we get older, and then you know, even beyond that, now you start having health problems you know, when you get older. And so there's always things to distract us from being productive. There's always things that cause us and push us to say, you know what, I don't have the energy, I don't have the time to do something useful, which is why from the beginning we have to be very purposeful in saying, this I'm not going to compromise. I'm always going to do this. I'm also going to have a spiritual prayer rule. I'm always going to fast. I'm always going to go to church. I'm always going to do this regardless of what happens around me so that as I get older and these stresses increase in my life, that I won't compromise them. May God protect us. Mm. 
Okay, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We thank you, God, for the time you have given us here, and every time and every moment of our lives that you have offered to us, O God, seeking that we would use it in the right way. Help us to be wise in the use of our time, and wise in the way that we manage it. Grant us, O Lord, not to be lazy, but to have an inner motivation and inner strength, always seeking to do what is right and what is good, not only seeking to please ourselves or to have comfort or rest, but to use an, our time and to toil so that we can produce, O Lord, for ourselves uh, uh, mansions in heaven. Grant us, O Lord, every good work, and grant us to always be consistent and sincere and genuine workers, O Lord, with you, working with you and having your spirit dwell within us to help us in our work and to support our work. Grant us, O Lord, to do your will and grant us your peace and in every good work. Help us, O Lord, to be satisfied and fulfilled and content so that as we work, O Lord, we feel that we are doing your work and that we are happy and joyful because we are sharing with it with you. Through the prayers of St. Mary, Archangel Michael, St. Paul, St. Mark, and all your saints, hears as we pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The love of God the Father, the grace of the only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion of the gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.